Something's coming. Something dark. I sense it. This is a new beginning. For some, war. For others, power. It's been a while. Things have changed. I started hearing whispers about Thrawn's return. heir to the Empire. We have to prepare for the worst. The Jedi fell a long time ago. There aren't many left. It is time to begin again. Welcome back, everyone. Happy Star Wars Celebration. They just dropped the brand new Ahsoka trailer, so we'll break it down. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs references. We finally saw live action Grand Admiral Thrawn for real. There's a bunch of new dark Jedi, so I'll explain what's going on with them. There's a whole bunch of connections to the Mandalorian because it's happening during the same time period, too. If you're brand new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes. It premieres in August, so be sure to subscribe to get them. Dave Filoni wrote and directed most of these episodes, which is why he didn't work on the Mandalorian Season 3 episodes quite as much. I believe he wrote a little bit on the season, like he worked on Episode 7. They're actually screening that later tonight. We're probably going to get a Thrawn teaser before the end of the season and another Ahsoka teaser just pushing into that series. But just starting at the beginning of the trailer footage, it starts with Ahsoka at this abandoned Jedi temple at these ruins where she encounters some of the HK droids from Thrawn's 7th fleet. That was the whole idea is that Morgan Elsbeth, who is a character that we see in the trailer, going to be a big character during the Ahsoka series, a villain to her, is meant to be one of Thrawn's followers who's been helping him return from the unknown regions. She has the HK droids from Thrawn's 7th fleet. They had his insignia on them. That's how we knew that she was connected to Thrawn. And then obviously Ahsoka said at the end of the episode, where is your master? Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? That's who she's talking about when she says something is coming. She even literally says the words heir to the Empire when talking about Thrawn, confirming my theory since the beginning of the Mandalorian season one that they're doing a version of the live action heir to the Empire series through the Ahsoka series, the Mandalorian. These are the connected series during the Mandoverse in this part of the timeline. There'll be some different characters, like they're substituting the Grogu cloning plot for the Luke cloning plot in the Heir to the Empire Thrawn trilogy in the books. But you'll see a lot of familiar things if you read the original Thrawn trilogy. If you haven't, it's fantastic. I would recommend checking it out. The whole vibe from the trailer pits this series as more of a wandering samurai type of series. The same vibe from Ahsoka's Mandalorian Season 2 episode. The tone of the series will be a lot more like that. Love the shot of her using her twin lightsabers to bore down into the chamber below. That's meant to be a callback to the scene at the end of the Clone Wars where she did the same thing, escaping the other clones during Order 66 when it had just started. You have to imagine that she's doing this while Mando is with Grogu helping the Mandalorians retake Mandalore. Like it's all happening around the same time. One of the other big changes is the Lucasfilm logo is pure red, which I think is meant to be a reference to the dark Jedi that we see during the trailer. The voice of Balin talking about a new beginning is Ray Stevenson's Dark Jedi character. I believe he's meant to be a fallen Jedi who survived Order 66 and since then has turned to the dark side, but he wasn't part of the Inquisitorius. It does seem like Ahsoka fights a former Inquisitor because the Dark Jedi that's using the double-bladed lightsaber here looks like an Inquisitor's blade. But by this point in the timeline, the Inquisitorius don't exist anymore, so any of the surviving Inquisitors that were still around would have just been rogue Inquisitorius. We see live-action Sabine Wren. They actually showed us a preview of her in her full Mandalorian armor. Remember, she's a Mandalorian from House Wren, so that's why she might show up by the finale of The Mandalorian, because all the Mandalorians are supposed to unite on the planet Mandalore. But all the scenes of her, for the most part in the trailer, take place on Lothal. 
It's meant to be a reference to the very end of Star Wars Rebels. I believe they're going to flash back and we'll see a version of this scene happening in live action when Ahsoka comes to visit her and she's like, it's been a while. I believe that's meant to be part of the live action version of this scene here that we already saw on Star Wars Rebels. It was meant to happen right after the events of Return of the Jedi, whereas the Mandalorian series picks up about five years after Return of the Jedi, which is why I say Ahsoka might jump around in the timeline a little bit with a few flashbacks. Ahsoka facing Morgan Elsbeth's HK droids from the 7th Fleet, Thrawn's 7th Fleet. These are meant to be the same force of HK droids that you saw during Mandalorian Season 2. It also seems like this Dark Jedi Balin has plans for the galaxy as well. It might be connected to Thrawn or Thrawn might try to engage his services. They might be substituting the Joris Kaboeth character from the Heir to the Empire Thrawn trilogy for this Balin character. He might be the stand-in for that Jedi Master that goes a bit twisted by the end of the Thrawn trilogy. In the original version of the Thrawn trilogy, that George Caboth Jedi Master character starts out being just a little bit weird and just slowly goes crazier and crazier and crazier, and you find out that he's also a clone as well. But I don't think the Balin character is meant to be a clone. Like I said, I think he's just meant to be a Jedi that survived Order 66 and has been twisted evil since then and turned to the dark side. The war that he's talking about is more of a metaphor for Thrawn returning in force with the Seventh Fleet, but also the dark side of the force resurging. Then we get our first official look at Mary Elizabeth Winstead as a version of Hera from Star Wars Rebels in The Ghost. This is all meant to be characters from Star Wars Rebels in live action, basically, like the sequel to Star Wars Rebels, but in live action. I believe they're also doing her son Jason Syndulla during the series as well. He is force sensitive. We might see some flashbacks to Kanan Jars or some references to him, but he's dead in present day. And I don't believe he learned how to become a force ghost, so I'm not expecting to see him show up as a force ghost. If we see him, it'll be pictures of him, probably. We see live action Chopper for anybody who wondered if he was going to show up on the series. Then we see the actual Balin character and his dark apprentice who's being played by Ivana Sanko. I don't know what her name is on the series, but she's just meant to be his dark Jedi Padawan. You see her attacking a New Republic ship. Then we go back to Lothal. You see Ahsoka's ship here from the end of Star Wars Rebels. Like I said, picking up basically where Rebels left off in that same scene. This is literally meant to be the same tower that you see at the end of Rebels. It seems like this is when Ahsoka comes back at the end of Rebels to tell Sabine, okay, it's time to find what's going on with Grand Admiral Thrawn, time to find Ezra Bridger. And what happened at the end of Rebels is that you basically end the series right before the beginning of A New Hope, and then it jumps in time to this scene here. So when you're seeing Sabine Wren, she's been through the Galactic Civil War. She worked with the Rebels during that whole period. That's why she's wearing the leather jacket here. It seems like she's had some city miles on her because she's just been through the original trilogy. When Ahsoka says things have changed, we see the New Republic Senate, Mon Mothma, with a couple of the other newer senators that are part of the New Republic. Slightly older, slightly wiser Mon Mothma that we see during the Andor series. When she says she started hearing whispers, she's talking about Grand Admiral Thrawn because she goes on to talk about Thrawn, and we actually see the back of his head with the blue skin. The interesting thing here, though, you see, the ship that he's on does not look like a typical Imperial Star Destroyer ship that's part of his 7th Fleet, so it seems like he's picked up more forces, but these might be the Dreadnoughts from the Heir to the Empire storyline, the original Thrawn trilogy. During that storyline, one of the things that Thrawn is after, more power that he's after, is this mysterious lost fleet of Dreadnoughts that he thinks is going to beef up his forces enough to take down the New Republic. That might be the ships that he's on right here with Morgan Elsbeth, because you see her on these same ships later. It's meant to be a massive upgrade in capital ships to his already big 7th fleet. Love the shout out from Ahsoka saying heir to the Empire, confirming all of our theories all these years. About Thrawn's return. As heir to the Empire. This is why during the Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 1, they showed you the Purgles, the Space Whales, which are meant to be a callback to Ezra Bridger and Grand Admiral Thrawn being lost in the Unknown Regions. Showing us the Purgles again was meant to represent that they had returned. They had found a way back. On these new ships, you actually see a couple of the Death Star droids, the RA-7 droids. We just saw those on the Mandalorian. It seems like Morgan Elsbeth will be one of the main antagonists to Ahsoka, in addition to Ray Stevenson's Balin, Dark Jedi character, and Grand Admiral Thrawn. But really, the main villain is Grand Admiral Thrawn. Really cool details during this scene too. Like obviously you see Ahsoka fighting Balin the Dark Jedi. Really cool lightsaber fight they're probably going to have here. But in the background of this Jedi temple, these symbols that you see, the energy looks like it's force energy that you saw Grogu when he was on Tython. But the symbols actually look like the same symbols from the World Between Worlds, which are the same symbols that make up the Ahsoka logo. So we might actually see a live action version of the World Between Worlds during this series. 
That was basically a place in the Force that allowed people access to all points in time and space. Like, you could basically travel through time. That's how Ezra Bridger wound up saving Ahsoka during the fight with Darth Vader in an earlier season of Star Wars Rebels. He basically yoinked her through space and time. It seems like Hera here is trying to warn the New Republic leadership about what's coming, and this is probably related to Grand Admiral Thrawn. We see the Dark Jedi Padawan in a dogfight with Ahsoka's ship, we see what looks like the beginning of a really cool Darth Vader style hallway scene with Balin's Jedi just ripping through the New Republic in this hallway. Don't want to be stuck in a hallway with any Sith characters, or Luke Skywalker for that matter. We finally get our first look at Ezra Bridger when Sabine Wren is looking at a hollow of him. While Ahsoka is narrating that there are very few Jedi left, because he is basically a Jedi trainee. I don't know if you would call him a full Jedi yet. It's kind of like a Luke Skywalker original trilogy situation where Yoda said, Oh, Jedi, you're a Jedi. Well, you're not quite one yet. You still have a couple tests you have to confront Vader before that happens. I have a feeling it'll be the same thing with some of the characters on this series too. Ahsoka has that cool fight with what seems like a former Inquisitor. The only thing I would object to during the trailer is that they call her a Jedi in the trailer. Technically, Ahsoka is not a Jedi because she left the Jedi Order. She's just a highly trained person, a very powerful person in the Force. The same thing is true of Grogu, he left the Jedi Order, but he's still training in the Force. Then we get a super deep cut. This is meant to be the same Jedi droid from the Jedi ship. He had the designs of every single lightsaber that had ever been created. And I don't know that this is meant to be a flashback, but it seems like it's still happening on Lothal. And if you remember, it was the voice of David Tennant, so I believe that David Tennant is coming back to do the voice for this series. There's a lot of stealth voiceover cameos in Star Wars, so I wonder how many people will spot this. Most people who watch Clone Wars will probably recognize him. We might see some of the Mandalorian characters like Mando and Grogu show up or cameo on the Ahsoka series. Maybe Bo-Katan as well too, because Bo-Katan has so much history with Ahsoka. I believe going forward, there'll be more crossovers between the characters from the Mandalorian series and Ahsoka because we just saw Zeb from Star Wars Rebels in live action on the Mandalorian. He will also probably show up on the Ahsoka series as well too. Pretty much most of the Star Wars Rebels characters from the Ghost are coming back in live action through this. Then we get the confirmation that the Ahsoka episodes are coming in August. It'll be towards the end of August, but it'll be eight episodes just like The Mandalorian. Looks like it's going to be total fire. Obviously, there's so much that we don't know about the series yet. Like, this is just a taste. They're calling it the teaser. So I think we'll get a full trailer by the time we get to this summer. We also saw footage from Star Wars Acolyte, Star Wars Skeleton Crew, which is also meant to be a spinoff of The Mandalorian and connected to the Ahsoka series as well. But we won't see the Skeleton Crew series characters on The Mandalorian. But if you spotted any other Easter eggs or references during the trailer footage that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. Of course, I'll do more Ahsoka videos when we get more footage. And obviously, my full Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 7 video will post next week after they release it. We might get some more Ahsoka cameos, maybe Sabine Wren too. Everyone click here for that Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 7 video and click here for all my Mandalorian episodes. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. This is the way.